Uh, you talk about uh, you're talking about the playing game and you know the the Heat, the compromised Miami Heat. From the Celtics' perspective, we know last year they took on the Hawks. Hawks were not very good, and that series went six games. Mm-hmm. Do you think uh, is there an opponent that the Celtics can look at between these two, whether it's Miami without Jimmy Butler? Or the or the Bulls, they can look at and say, "I know we're better than this team, but there's a there's an a, an opponent that will make them focus more than they did last year in the first round." I, I you know what? If you are who everybody thinks you are, and the record you put up so far, I'd say no. They've been playing that well. Now the last couple of weeks, once they wrapped everything up, they took their foot off the gas. Some of those games, you know, I, I don't think they really challenged themselves. But this is going to be their big test to step up and put everybody else on notice uh, for in the middle of the year and early in the year and even the three quarters of the year. But I said the Celtics were the team to beat. But in the last month, there have been question marks about, uh, you know, if the Celtics can win it. They have a, uh, a whole supply of great players. They're healthy right now. Joe Mazzulla has done a magnificent job of resting guys. Al Horford, uh, Porzingis should come in fresh. You get a week off, Celtics have no excuse but to come in, I think, and actually steamroll whoever they play, especially in the first round. From the bigger picture, Max, we were just talking about it with Michael. You know, is is it championship or bust for this team? Is that what it takes to to consider this a successful season? Is that fair? Despite the team having the best record in the league, should we look at it and say, if they don't win a championship, this is a failure? You know, Sean Grandy makes it, my broadcast partner makes a great point of saying, you know, people should stay in the moment and celebrate just how great a a season this team had offensively. He continues to say, statistically, one of the greatest offensive teams in the history of the NBA. And he's right. But what does that give you in Boston? When the Patriots were, what, 17-0? and And when they had that other game, and they, they were the greatest team ever. Nobody talked about them anymore being the greatest team ever. So you can throw those stats out the window. I think only here in, in Boston, people accept championships. They don't, That regular season means that you look at the Bruins last year. Bruins were unbelievable, had one of the best records in the history of the NHL. And uh, turned around and fell flat on their face. Mm. Nobody really cared or gave. So I think, again, like you're saying right now, I believe it's more championship than bust. All right. So let's talk about the other side of the coin here, Max, Uh, because a a first round playoff exit for the Celtics right now is pretty much unthinkable. I mean, I, I just I can't even wrap my head around how it would happen or in what fashion. But short of the NBA Finals and whether you want to put them winning it or just being there, let's say something happens. It's a second-round exit. It's it's an Eastern Conference Finals exit, and it's not due to injury. Um, what would you say, if you had to predict right now, is the reason for it, and what would the immediate fallout be? Uh, the reason that they will not win a championship or, this year, or make or, it, or, or even or be, make or the be fun, front, yes, or, or be be bounced, yes. Um, maybe I, I would think rebounding. Uh, teams have killed them with second chance opportunities uh, in this last month and a half. Uh, Josh Hart had 16 rebounds, and at one point, Jalen Brown had zero. Jalen Brown is a great player. He's going to have to pick it up, rebound the basketball. Uh, They have to be more physical when it comes to that side. Everything else, they've been brilliant. But that side of the coin, defensive rebounds, they're going to have to pick up. And if they don't pick it up, they could be in some trouble against a Joel Embiid or New York, which killed them uh, with second-chance opportunities. Cleveland is a very long, athletic team. They get second-chance. So, the defensive rebounds are going to be the key to me. That's what's going to make the difference in them being in the finals or or getting bounced out early. Of those teams you just mentioned, those Eastern Conference teams, which one is the biggest threat to the Celtics? I think the Knicks right now uh, because, Joel, um, because they've just been playing really well. Um, Jane Brunson has been really good. Uh, you know, he's played at the all-star level. He's picked that team up. And Anobi comes in as a really good defender. Uh, you know, they don't have Julius Randle, but they rebound and they're tough. And that would be the team that would, would 
strike a little fear in my heart if I was the Celtics, but uh, the Knicks have to get by Philadelphia. And Philadelphia is not going to be a joke. I think that matchup is going to be a really good one for Philly because Joel Embiid looks is starting to round into shape, and Maxie's been playing well. I think the physicality of Philadelphia really could surprise the New York Knicks.